theyeshiva.net. Okay, welcome everybody. We're holding, we're going to continue the Maimer, which is Vihine Anachno Ma'almim, page uh, 55. The first column, almost on the bottom. The line starts, Chuli, Ella, Shaide Allah, Zu, Nasib, Chines, Ilmim. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve lines from the bottom. The line starts, Chuli. See, Chavav, Ella, Shaide. There's a period after Ilmim. Al Derech Zayuvin, Shayesh Gamkin, Ibur Sheni. Since the beginning of Pasha Shmoy, says, Ve Yosef, Hayeb, Mitzrayim. So Yosef is Nachalzim, Mitzrayim. So, Mela. We could, we could still hold on to Yosef Abbasala. Huh. So the Medrash says that Ma'almim yeah, Alumim, on one level it means binding sheaves, on another level it comes from the word muteness. Elam is a mute. Ma'almim Alumim, we were all basically practicing the avoid of muteness. Or to say it simply, we're, we were all being quiet together. We were all being silent together. What would that mean? So the Balatanya explained by Riches that the two interpretations, the Medrash are not two separate interpretations. One is the Oymek, one is the depth of the first one which is really the function of Medrash, to bring out the oymek, the depth of the psukim. That the deeper concept of ma'al alumim is to bring together a world that's fragmented, which is the whole avodas habirurim, to be able to identify within each creature and every situation and every person. Their divinity, their godliness, their aspect of infinity, which first of all allows them to come back to their own source, but also allows them to come back to the larger unity, the achdos of Micham Chay Yisrael, Goy Echad Ba'aretz, as explained at length. And that process always requires silence, because whenever anyone goes up to their source, the Olul, as he puts it, when the Olul returns to the Ilah, like the fetus in the womb of the mother, there is a sense of silence. Because dibur always requires a certain sense of assertion, of assertiveness, the assertiveness of the eye, which is the yesh, which is when the alul leaves the womb of the ilah, but when the alul is in the womb of the ilah, absorbed in its source, as halacha puts it, aidi de tarid lemivla, loy palit, when you're absorbed, when you're involved in absorbing, you don't, you don't emit. So in that sense, in that state of bittel, of the dveikus in the ilah, there's no sense of dibur because dibur is always you're you're becoming a mashpia, a communicator to somebody outside of you, to somebody different, to the zulus, which doesn't exist when the birurim are oila in a state of ibur in their source. That's vihine anachnu ma'almim ma'almim alumim. That was the main uh, discussion. So he continues. In Eitz Chaim, which is the main, uh, one of the main svarim of the Arizal, that was written by his student Reb Chaim Vital, he says there is Ibur Rishin and Ibur Sheni. Ibur Rishin, of course, is first pregnancy when the child is in the womb, the fetus is in the womb. But he says after birth, there's stages of development that are called Ibur Sheni, a second form of pregnancy. What does this mean? What does this mean? We said that a child, a, a fetus in the womb of its mother, it's, the Gemara says, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a chalik of the mother, it's not its own life. If you will detach it from its mother at this point, prematurely it can't even be viable. It often can't survive if it's too premature. Why? 
because it doesn't have yet <coughs> it's the mechanism to be able to function on its own. The Chiddush of birth is, the miracle of birth is, that it emerges as an independent identity. In the womb, even in halach, it's called uber yerech imoy. It's, it's, it's a thigh of the mother. It's, it's, it's part of the mother's body. And biologically that way, it's the mother's organism. She's working twice as hard. From the oxygen to the nutrients, from the exercise to the blood flow, all the aspects, it's the mother. It's the mother's oxygen. It's the mother's blood flow. It's the mother's nutrients and so forth. That's why she has to be careful because what she's doing, it's not only she's doing this. It's all the child as well. Uber yerechim. In other words, when you look at the Uber, what do you see? It's part of the mother. It's an extension of the mother. The Chiddush of birth is that there's a detachment. There's a sense of separateness. Not completely, because the baby is not mature yet. The baby still needs the mother. Still has to nurse from the mother's milk or a substitute of it. Then there are stages in development. There's a stage where the child is not eating anymore from the mother. is drinking the mother's milk anymore. The child can eat its own food, baby food. Ultimately bread and other foods, etc. Ein HaTinek, the Gemara says in Brachas, that Ein HaTinek, when the Tinek starts eating dog on grain, so Yedea Likris Abba, the different stages of development. The Arizal calls it generally three stages, Ibur, Yenika, and Meichen. Ibur is pregnancy, Yenika is the state of nursing, and then there is Meichen, a certain level of intelligence that grows where the baby can start talking, which usually coincides also with coming to an end of the stage of nursing, and now there's a deeper level of independence. Of course, still a child, still an infant, and even when it's eating on its own, it's not completely independent. Sometimes in the animal kingdom at this point, they could be independent. Birds and the fish already, when they're hatched, are often independent. Sometimes they're eating uh, the corpses of their, uh, of their progenitors, like the salmon, huh? Yeah, or, or, or their source. But uh, with humans, it's not that way. When, the, when did Mamash do you become independent as a human being? <laughs> huh? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> There's different stages. So, huh? uh, Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you realize you're your own person. So there's many stages in this. So that result says, for, to get to the next stage of development, you need a new Ibur. There's a certain form of a, a new pregnancy. Because whenever you're going into a whole new stage of maturity, of development, so you have to go back, the Olul has to go back to the Ilah, lose its identity, and it reemerges in a, if, in a new way, in a new fashion. That's called Ibur Shani, the second pregnancy. Now this pregnancy is not physical, the child doesn't go back to the womb, but existential, existentially, there's a concept of Ibur Shani. Now this is interesting that Herizal says, this is the Balatani quotes this, because in childhood development, you know, psychologically, there's so many interesting stages of how it separates from its mother and it goes back to its mother and it's angry about separation and angry about connection. Uh, the whole libido uh, uh, relationships is a, is a complex one. But this concept of Ibur Shani is that there's a certain element of the Ubar, the mm. child, cleaving back to its source completely in order to be able to experience a new level of independence. And here you see again what we spoke about a few days ago, the theory of attachment, that for every new level of detachment, you need a deeper level of attachment. For every new level of autonomy and independence to get from Ibur to Yeniko, which is nursing, but it's separate because you're a separate person, you're viable. You need Ibur, and then to get from Yenika to Meichen, which is a higher level of intelligence or maturity or development and more independence, you need a new Ibur, a new, a new sense that the Allah can completely be one with the Ilah and then reemerge with more strength to be able to develop this new state of Meichen. To be clear, so this is not an evolution, this is shedding everything that the, uh, that the child previously had and starting from scratch. So it's not really an evolution. No, I wouldn't. The child doesn't shed everything and go back to, uh, you know, become a uh, an embryo. But I, I, it's it's what it has. It has, but it has to 
recreate a, a new connection in the source where in order to be able to experience the new Meich, which is called, and then in that's how there's Meich, the cotton Meich, it always has Meich, that's why it says Meich, the godless Meich, that means a higher form of Meich. Because that's the cloud, the ability to be able to emerge <coughs> as a successful yesh, meaning as a successful entity, always depends on the quality of how much uh, trust and how much connection there was with the own, with, with, with the ila. It's like we learned in the Maim in the summer with the Talmud and the Rav, right? That when the, when the, the Talmud wants to get, the Rav even wants to get a new idea, you have to like go back to pregnancy. You can't continue speaking because then you're just giving the information that you have. You really have to go back, so to speak, to childhood where you become a makabal. And by becoming a makabal, you could become a new mashpia on a higher level. It's always that way. Whenever you're going through a, 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 a growth state to a whole new place, you're going to have to first go through a new stage of being a makabal. And it's also true we see it throughout a person's life. And it's not always a comfortable thing. When, whenever a person is making a quantum leap from one state of consciousness to a new state of consciousness, you're not going to be able to remain intact. It's not going to be just incremental, you know, today I'm this and then now I have a new awareness. That's if it's a small little thing. But whenever it's a real transformation, there is first a certain bittle that's experienced where the alul must go back to the ila, go back to the drawing board, and there's a new birth. And pregnancy is not a simple thing because you really disappear. There's a, there's, you, you, you're not here anymore. But that's the only way for there to be a whole new child because a child can't be born without pregnancy. So I have to go back to the ila, back to the source. Huh? I don't, uh, let's not use the word death, yeah, but... Uh, same. Right. The same yeah. <laughs> My self-definition has to die. That's what you mean. My self-definition, the story I tell about myself, my con concept of self. Everyone has a certain concept. This is who I am. That story has to shed all of its layers. And I become like a little baby, like a little child. What, what's a little child doesn't have yet stories, right? A child doesn't, especially in the womb. In the womb. And there's like a, 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 a new lady, a naya a new birth. So that's what Arizal speaks about, the Ibur Sheni. <laughs> that's what he says. And the same is true in, in Avaidus Hashem as well. All this that we're talking about was the avoid of the shvatim. Their souls generally originate in a world called the world of Bria. Their consciousness was a consciousness of the world of Bria. This is all the brothers besides Yosef. Yosef's soul experienced the world of Atzillus, as we will say, we'll explain. This was part of the argument. They were a Merkava. Merkava means a chariot to a level which we call Malchus of Atzillus. In Tanakh, there's a story when Shlomo Melech built the Beis Hamikdash in Melachim Aleph. So he had Yud Beis Bakr. He built uh, twelve. He sculptured twelve oxen. It says Vahayam Oymed Aleihem, and the Yam, the sea, what looked like a sea, stood on them. This was a big pool, Yam Shel Shlomo, the big pool that Shlomo Melech made. The whole structure of the first Beis Hamikdash, Melachim Aleph, Perek Hey, Vav, those Prokim Zayin Ches. So there's a, the 12 oxen that he made and the Hayam Oymed Aleyim. Kabbalistically, this is defined as we'll see a little later more details. 12 dimensions in Olam Habriya and the Yam that stands over them, the Hayam Oymed Aleyim on these 12 oxen 
is represents what's called Malchus of Atzilus. That's the Yam. And it's connected to the Yud Beis Shvatim, which parallel these 12. Ula Zeus Ikir Avaidosam. So their main avoda was they worked with Olam Habriya and Yitzira and Asiya, lifting up, elevating the sparks of infinity that are everywhere, bringing it back to its source. What was the source? The Yam, which is Malchus already of the world of Atzilus. That's where all the sparks were absorbed through Maya Nukvan. Maya Nukvan, as we said, were the feminine waters, which represents the ascent, the sublimation of the feminine, of the human being down here in the world, who is dealing with the consciousness of Bri Yitzhirasi. That's why the dream says we are in a field. We're not in a house. We're in a field, an open field, a place of openness, a place of... Uh, just uninhibition, everything is open. It's a public, semi-public domain. That's where we are being ma'alum ma'alum and we're making from many one. That's the dream of Yosef about what his brothers are doing. All of them are doing it. Yosef is also doing it. So the sun is the three lower lamas? Yeah, yeah. The dream continues. What happens? They finish binding their sheaves, so now they have bundles. Suddenly Yosef's bundle stands up. And all of their bundles now turn to his. This already they didn't like. First part of the dream, I'm good. Second part, no. Now, as somebody asked in the beginning of the Shir, of Avram asked, the whole Maim until now was Achdus, 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 Achdus. And now they're bowing down to one. What happened? You just said that when you're Mavara the Nitzitz, suddenly you bring the world back to Achdos. But suddenly Yosef Hatzadik's bundles are what? Achdos till now, yeah? To Achdos until, till here was good, but now you're all bowing down to me. I'm superior. This is where the dream got a little sticky. Somebody told me that somebody once uh, <laughs> came to somebody and he said, you know, let's make Achdos. Let's make unity. He said, yeah, but I'm Kegin Vemen. You know, against whom? <laughs> you know, there's no unity in a vacuum. There has to be an enemy. <laughs> you got to gang up together. So all, all is sweet. All is wonderful. The world is really one. Baruch, Beis, Reish, Vav, Chav. It's all part of oneness. Achta Sapshuta. But then Yosef adds a whole new chapter. Suddenly his aluma stands up. Their alumas don't stand up. Come aluma, sivigam nitzav, and they all bow down to this aluma. So the Balatanya says, Omnam Yadua, it's known, Shahamayin Nukvin, the feminine waters, Afal Pishikvar Nichl Bubchinus Malchos, even though it already came up from Asiyah Yitzir and Bria, and was absorbed in what we would call Malchus of Atzilus, which is much higher than Bria, Adayin Sarech Bidur Sheni. It still needs a second Bidur. A second elevation, a second sublimation. Al yidei hamad, hamayin duchre, through the masculine waters. Meaning, in in Isis of Darizal it would be vohushen nimshach. Here's a classic expression of Kabbalah of Darizal, which he's going to explain. Vohushen nimshach. I'm just going to say the translation. Mayin duchrin deza, which is an acronym. Mayin duchrin dezeir anpin. Just push it to get the word straight without explaining the concept. Every world is made up of ten spheres, ten characteristics. Each one has a light and a vessel. Ten spheres is the ten building blocks of the world. The soul is made up of ten, right? Chachma. We learned many times. Chachma, Bina, Das, Chazid, Word, Tiferes. The Midas. Chesed, Vur, Teferis, Netzach, you said are called Zah, Zeir Ampin, the small face, in contrast to another dimension called Arich Ampin, the long face, which is Keser, which is above Chachma. So Zeir Ampin is Chachma through your side, and Malchus is under that, Malchus. When you speak about Atzillus, the Zah of Atzillus is Chesed, Vur, Teferis, Netzach, Yisoid, 
And then there's Malchus of Atzilus. Yichud Zah V'Nukva. Zun is Zah V'Nukva. Zah is masculine, Nukva is feminine. The unity of the masculine and the feminine is called Yichud Zah V'Nukva. Mayan Nukvin is the feminine waters, is when Malchus is aroused, like when the feminine triggers the relationship. Or Mayan Duchin is when the masculine triggers the relationship. And we know in every relationship it could be this way or this way, or both together. Mayan Duchin means there's a flow that comes from the male. Mayan Nukvin means there's a flow, orgasmic flow, that comes from the female. The physical words that Arizal often uses is a metaphor for the spiritual dynamic of the relationship between Hashem and the Jew, because generally, like the whole Shir Hashirim, is based on a marshal, that the fe- male and female relationship is a metaphor for the relationship between Hashem and the Jewish people, the soul and the body, heaven and earth, the world and godliness and so forth. So he's saying the Shvatim are from Bria. So their Nitzutzas, they bring it all up to where? To the Yam, to Malchus of Atzilus. That's where the feminine waters experiences the arousal, and it brings the Nitzutzas back to that. That's called Bidurish, the first Bidur. The lowest, that, part, huh? the lowest, to lowest Malchus, that's it. Now you need a Bidur Sheni, a whole new Bidur. What's the second Bidur? It's already in Atzilus, but it's Malchus of Atzilus. Bidur Sheni is a whole new Bidur through the Zah, through the higher Midas of Atzilus, to be able to be Mavari the Nitzudas, even though they're already in Malchus, because the Shvatim brought them there. They brought it from a place of separation to a place of Achdos. But now it needs a whole new Birur, a Birur Sheni. A whole new Birur Sheni. What's the Pshat in this? What's missing? He is even though the Nitzaitzis were Nisbarer already, they were elevated. We're talking about Ma'al Mimalumim. What's Ma'al Mimalumim? I hope you remember the whole Maimer, yeah? I didn't do a Chazara today. Ki Afal Pisha Nisbarer Ruhan even though all the Nitzaitzis were already Nisbarer. What's Nisbarer? Nisbarer means they were clarified, Barur. They were accentuated. They were identified. They were sublimated. No small feet. You revolutionized the landscape of planet Earth. You revealed the oneness. And all the sparks, which means the whole world, because the whole world is sparks, the whole world is DNA, the whole world is, is divine particles. That is the world. Nitsutsis is not up as some strange spark flying around. Nitsutsis is essentially the, the ultimate reality of the Nivra. It all was realigned in a state of bittel, oneness, with a lakos canal. Im kolzeh, you need a second bittel. I efshe lehem lisyachid mamish belakos yizbar. The ultimate unification with their own, with godliness, they're still not there yet. They're not capable of that. K'moy shahoyu koydim shviris hakelim shahoyu b'chines alakos mamish miyut shviris datayu. The way all the netzutzes were pre- Shvirus Hakem, the whole Maimer began with the process of Shvirus Hakem, the breaking, the shattering of the vessels. The way these sparks were pre Shvirus Hakem, where every spark was Mamisha Lakusa, was the 10 spheres of Oilam Atoyu, before the Kalim shattered and the Nitzutzas got scattered within the entire universe. And now you're doing Birir Hanitzutzas. It's not there yet. Ad Sheyum Shechaleim Gilu Shem Mada Atzilus. Until they can experience the revelation of the name of Hashem known as Ma, 45, when Yud and He and Vav and He are writ- written out fully. Yud, Vav, Dalad, He, Aleph, Vav, Aleph, Vav, He, Aleph, Yud, He, Vav, He, completely. You have Mem, He, 45. So when Shem, Ma, Vatsilis is revealed on them, and what happens? Vaideza is Badaru, Bitter, Sheni. Then the Nitzutsas go through a new transformation. Vuhuayike. And that's even more fundamental, more ikir than the first bit of the Shvatim. Why? Yan bechachma dafke is bariru. Because real, the real bit happens through chachma. Shahu b'chines hamad. That's the masculine waters, mayan duchrin. Ki ha bidur harishin hayerak shiyir behem b'chines bitl hayesh. The first bidur only created the bitl of the yesh. They're not a yesh anymore. Vizel, now this is Vizel Rochik Adayan Melakusmoid. So if we come back to the Marshall we had with Baruch, 
we can <laughs> see that the letters, which were separate, these, the rage, they all had their own yeshas. They're now back aligned. Yeah. Spells Bora. No yesh anymore. But they don't really recognize each other the same way. They're not, they, they don't have that, the Chachma that puts them together, even though they're aligned. They're no more yeshas. The beish is next to the rage, next to the love, etc. But they, they're still lacking what they were when they were Bora in, in the first. It's not, it's, yeah, he says, it's still, V'zeirachik adayin melekus ma'oid. Bitl ayesh there is, but it's still very distant from melekus. The ihu v'gar ma'yichad. Because he and his midas, this expression of zayar, in tikkuni zayar, he and his midas, gar ma'yichad, the word garments, his levushim, his kalim, kalim. In the English, the word garments is associated, comes from this, gar Garmoy is he and his instruments, his kalim, his levushim, his spheres, are one. Shem ebchin is bitl amiti. They are in a state of, of real bitl. Ela al yedeshen nimshech ben ebchin is mayin duchru. Only when you have the revelation of the masculine waters. Shu ha'oras shem ma levaranam. This is the light of ma v'atzilis to be mevarer than itzutzis, which are in malchus. Malchus is shem ban. But you want shem ma Ban is begematria behema, ma is begematria adam, behema is 52, adam is 45. Oz nichelu bitl amiti belakus. Now the netzutzas can be absorbed in the real bitl and alakus. Ukemashal, I'm just saying this mashal is not exact, it's, it's, the mashal is as hard as the nimshal. Ukemashal ba adam shemavarir birudim. Take an example from a person who's involved in birudim. What's the classic birudim? Aydei sha'eichel v'shaisa. Person eats and drinks. The energy, the fuel from eating and drinking is now used in davening and connecting to Hashem with love and awe. The entire love and awe is being fueled literally by the nutrients that I just absorbed from the food. This is a classic case of birudim. The body does the birudim on a physical level. The soul does the bitter on a spiritual level. The moment I absorb food, the first thing the body starts doing immediately, one of the greatest miracles of biology is birurim, which we call the whole digestion, digestion process. What is digestion process? The body right away identifies. This is good for me. This is not good for me. This is long-term fat. <laughs> this is short-term energy. This is going to the blood. This is going to the besakise. This is going into the fat reserve, right? Into Paro's oitza uh, for the seven years of famine that are, gonna, that are coming, etc. The body does that, takes a few hours, and not a pashta thing, breaks everything down. Birudim, birudim. This is redeemable, this is not redeemable, this is trash, and this is gewaldic, and everything in between. That's what the body does. In fact, much of our day, that's what we're busy doing unconsciously. <laughs> While we're busy, you know, sleeping and sitting on the couch and reading or doing other things, the body doesn't stop doing its birudim. Mm -hmm. But then there's davaydas abirudim on a spiritual level. When I take this energy, it's all about energy. Food gives you energy. What do I do with this energy? So he says, the Jew davens ba'ava v'yira. So what happens? She nimtza nichlilu achriyus shala macholim v'amashkim. She naflu b'shviris ha'kelim b'pchines ha'ava v'yira shala. The entire life force, every food has life. Every food has energy. Every food is made up of the unique molecular atomic structure, which gives it its unique dimensions. Ultimately, that is a nitzutz. Those are nitzutz. So the life of all the food or all the beverages that fell down through Shvira Sakelem, it all went through a process of Shvira Sakelem. That's why it just emerges as a physical piece of steak or a physical cucumber or a physical piece of chicken or whatever it is. Whatever that food is, it just it's a separate food. That's it. It can even entice you to become extremely indulgent and detach yourself from your purpose and even from your basic health. But you now did a bitter. What, what was the bitter? You took the chiyas of the machalam and the mashkim, which went through a process of shvir sakalim. And we, what happened to this chiyus? It became part of p'chines ha'ava v'yirishullah. Now it's part of my love life. It's part of my awe. Because what's fueling my love? What's fueling my passion? You need energy for that. So now you took the nitzutz, and where did you bring? You brought back the nitzutz. The nitzutz is now part of a process of ava and yirah. V'im kolzeh. 
ואם כל זה, אמס, all true, הוא עדיין רחק ממהוס אחד האמס. It's still distant from the essence of the oneness of truthfulness. ממהוס from the essence of אחד, the one that's אמס true. אלו כשעל ידי הלוס, מה ינוק ונדאבה וירא שלו. נמשכו לו דחילו ורחימו מלמיילה מאיס השם. There's a bitter shame if after he brings up the feminine water as his own love and his own law. Oh, now there's a hamshacha from the chilu rechimu. The chilu is or and rechimu is love. Milmaila from above. May Ace Hashem from Hashem. Shetipula love Ema. There will be on him an or that comes from Hashem. Oz yuchlulu ba'ave v'yirizu shenamshacha milmaila mepchines alakos mamash. Now the netzutzes of the food could be absorbed in the love and the awe that came from Hashem. Not that came from me. That came from Elikus Mamish. Val derech zehu bidur sheni demayin dukhren. This is an example of the bidur sheni, the second bidur. So he gives, gave an example from the avoid of a person. I could do all the bidurim, but it's still, there's a bitl hayash, my love, my awe. But it's still rachik. The nitzitz is still rachik me alakus ma'oid. It's far from echad emes until I experience a love and awe that comes from above, from alakus. That's like from the ma'avatzilus, higher than malchus, from the male waters that completely unite the nitzitz with alakus. Va'afilu rebakiva sheyatsa nishmasa be'echad. Even rebakiva, the Gemara says in Masech de Brachas. That Yatsa Nishmasoi Be'echad, his soul went out. When he said the word Echad, the Gemara says at the end of Masech the Brachas, the Rabbi Akiva was caught by the Romans. It was the time of Krishna, Samachalaf Fahmed Beis, and they took him out to be murdered. And the Gemara describes graphically how they tortured Rabbi Akiva, the Masrekas Shalbarzo. And Rabbi Akiva was saying Shma. And the students asked him, How could you say Shma now, At Khan? And he said famously, Kol Yomai, my entire life, every day when I said Shema, I asked myself, and I was pained by it, when will I already be able to fulfill and now that I have the opportunity, you just want me to dismiss the opportunity. And Rabbi Akiva was saying Shema was in the morning. And the Gemara says, when he came to the word Echot, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekein Hashem Echot, Yotzo Nishmosoi Be'echot. His soul Immer, his soul went out of him. He expired. He passed away. His soul went back to heaven by the echad. This is the deepest, this is, for good reason, the deepest level of achdos. Yotzen eshmosei be'echad. The deepest level of achdos. It says, Afil Rebbe Akiva she yotzen eshmosei be'echad. Im kol zeh had a mesidis nefesh al hanivra Rochek adayin melakos. The mesiris nefesh, the surrendering of a soul, the sacrifice of a soul of a nivra, of a created being, rochek adayin melakos, is still distant from godliness. A bitl there is, bitl ayesh there is, mesiris nefesh there is. But it's rochek from el echad ha'emes alakos. El asheb nimshech alav ha'adam ebchines echad ha'emes. Until, and that's what happened by Rabbi Kiva, a light was communicated to him from the oneness of truth. That's the Pshat in the Gemara. There was an Echad that was communicated from above, and his Mesidus Nefesh became absorbed in the real Echad Mamish, which the Nivra on his own, even when the greatest moments of Mesidus Nefesh can't achieve. The Biru Shani, the Biru Shani. Huh? Yeah, but it's a different Indian. I mean, Vizel Indian la Mehevi Echad Be Echad. In Zoya, there's an expression, we say it in the Kegavna, Kegavna uh, Erev Shabbos. Those who say Kegavna, Nusak Svard, or those who say the Zoya. So there's an expression from the Zoya that's Parshas Vayakal. Kegavna de Inun Mesyachadin. You remember what I'm talking about? The Aramaic. Uh, this is by Memad Likin, and this is Kigavna. So there's those who know the famous Rosh the Shabbos. <laughs> so the Kigavna, we say it right when Shabbos comes in, yeah. So the Lashon over there is, Lameheve, 
echad be'echad. One should be one with one. Echad l'mehave echad be'echad. What's pshat? So it starts off. Kegav nadinim esachad in la'ela ufachi yisachadus l'sata beraza de'echad l'mehave imen la'ela chad l'kavel chad. The whole kegav is about that the unity above is also reflected below until l'mehave echad be'echad. What's pshat l'mehave echad be'echad? So the Baal Tanya teaches shepchinis echad the yichude tata bitla yesh nichlo biyichude la bitla miti. There's the echad that the person can accomplish, which is called yichude tata, the lower level of unity. But that's not the ultimate echad. As he puts it, it's Yeroche Kadayan from Echad Emes. Lemeve echad be echad, that my echad, your echad, our echad, more appropriate, should be able to be unified with the ultimate echad. The bitl hayesh with bitl amiti. Or Yechud Tata with Yechud Eilah. Yechud Tata is a lower level of unity. Yechud Eilah is a higher level of unity. And these masculine waters which goes out to elevate the feminine waters of Malchus, this is Yosef. If you remember the beginning of the Maimon, he brought the Pasuk, that there's Aden, and there's the river that goes out of Aden, and it irrigates the garden, and from there it splits up into four, which is the process of Shvir Sakelem. Yosef is the river that goes out of Aden to irrigate the Gan, the garden of Malchus Datsilis, which you remember is the Yam that stood over the 12 oxen of Shloima. He's the river. And the river that flows from Ein Soif goes till Malchus Vatsilis. After that, there's a break. There's a split. After that, there's a period. From already from the beginning of Bria. This is known as the shine, the flow of the kav and the chut, the line and the thread of Ein Soif. After the Tzimtzum, the Arizal says, after the Ein Soif, we learned in Vyadait, after the Ein Soif concealed himself and there's an empty space, there's a kav and a chut that comes from the Ein Soif into the world. That flows, that's the river that flows till the gone. For Shom is Stayim, it ends over there in a revealed way. That's why from Bria starts the worlds of separation. Misham Yipare, the river splits. Yosef is the one who could bring the Ein Soif even into Bri Yitzirah For this he needs his brothers. His brothers bring up the Birurim till Malchus of Atzillus, till the garden. They do Birurishin. Yosef does Birurishini. Sheiyu nechlolim belekusoy mamish kanal. The Netzutzah should be absorbed mamish in elekus. The bitter of Yosef is in a completely different realm than the avoidus habirurim of the shvatim. Shabir shel shvatim, the avoidus habirurim, the avoid of the shvatim who shemaylem mayin nukvin b'malchus datzilus va'adayin loy nepech lelekus mamish. They'll bring up everything to Malchus, but it does not become mamish godliness. And the word is mamish. Ache Yosef, until Yosef mamshech, he brings forth Hamad, the Mayan Duchrin, Shua Ores Oyrin Soif, Shemalubish Bechachma, Vaash Azal Venor Yotzim Eyedin, O Bechachma is Beriru Birur Beis. And through this, you can have the second bidder. Then there could be the lower unity, which is absorbed in the higher unity. This is what it says. We're all binding sheaves in the field. Everyone. This is the Avedis Abirudim of the world of Bria. To bring them up. Through feminine waters and malchus. That's everybody. The Yosef Atzmai Bidur Bidur Zadish and Gamke. Yosef is also doing the first one. They're all doing it together. After Sharsha Mishay Ma, the Atzilus Shobchinus Hamad, even though he comes from Atzilus, Athel Pikain, Meachesh and Eslabish Lamata Beguf, 
Anyone who comes into a body, he had to work together with his brothers. Everyone is identical in the first bidur. That's where they're working in perfect unison. Once this is finished, suddenly Yosef's aluma rises, it stands up. In his aluma, there suddenly up a whole new mile, a whole new elevation. Why? Because of his source in Atzilus. Which is why he can do the second bidur to elevate that which has already have been elevated through the Shvatim into Malchus. The other brothers don't have the capacity to do the second bidur. Why? Because they, their the souls are from Bria. Shalomata mata me atzilis. It's lower than atzilis. They can achieve yichud tato, not yichud ilo. Bittel hayesh, not bittel amiti. The echad of man, but not the ultimate echad. The mysterious nefesh of the human, but not the ultimate echad. So Yosef says at this point, when you recognize that my aluma was elevated to a higher place, so now your aluma is bowed down to my aluma. What's pshat? Bebchin is bitl mamish. The aluma is now have to go through a whole new bitl. And in many ways, this bitl is much harder than the first bitl. Because the first bitl, you were escaping yeshes. And now you're escaping your version of bitl. To, to escape yeshes is, is very geschmack. Who doesn't, if you have a psashtikal soul, you want to escape yeshes. But to run away from your version of bitl, zoisloi, I'm already, I'm already one. I'm in a state of Mercedes Nefesh. Ah. Because without Yosef's mad, their nitsutsis can never be absorbed in a lakus mamish. Then it can be nichol and alakus v'zel v'atishtachavena. They have to bow down. In other words, experience a new bittel. V'azu shenichlul belakus kanal, and then they can be absorbed in alakus. Until those last two lines, I was very pessimistic. He says, <laughs> well, "Let me explain." <laughs> because, <laughs> because, <laughs> no, because I could. We can try to do the work of the shvatim, but we have no power to do Yosef's work. So. We're sort of stuck. Very, very nice. We can do this work. But once he's telling me this all from, guess what? As much as you did, you still need Yosef. But once he says that the oh, Avada. The, the Shtachavena is Avada. Nuapo, yeah, yeah, Avada. To trigger the... <laughs> Avada. So there is something we can do. Avada. Avada. That's the next avoid. That's the next step. We'll continue tomorrow. Ibur, Ibur. Mecham Abyssal Ibur. Nish nine months, ain't tug. I understood. I didn't mean sound facetious. I got it, I got it, I got it. So what's he telling me? I got it, of course, always. Vada. Vada. This is the resistance. The resistance is a very deep resistance. Of course we're dealing with it every day. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.